Wednesday after work and I'm back in the garden getting ready to plant uh, the last of my tomatoes. This is some old man. I'm ready to go ahead and get this job done. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got these are Perone tomatoes and I've already pre-dug my holes and I just need to go ahead and add my uh, bone meal into the holes and then just plant plant the uh, plant the tomatoes. Once again, I've got uh, more whole, more tomatoes than I do holes, which is fine. It means I'll have leftovers. I'll be able to go ahead and give them to the neighbors, whoever asks. Get them done. I've got two extras, which is fine. Get this tray up here before I can grab it from above. And then I just need to backfill the holes a little bit. Break the uh, clumps of dirt in it up. Oh, what we got here? That's from last year. Now, based on experience from when we put tomatoes here in this location uh, a few years ago, once they get going, they will climb right up here to the top of the uh, top of the uh, railing and use the railing as an actual something to dink or two, and it works pretty well. And we'll be picking tomatoes like crazy later in the summer.
The other thing that I'll probably have to do in a, a week or so is get out here and relay the uh, irrigation lines and get that all checked out to make sure that there are no leaks and then I can go ahead and start my uh, irrigation. I've got a motor to add to my uh, rainwater storage that will pump the uh, put some pressure into these lines and get the water out to where it needs to go. And I'll just, whenever I need to run it, I'll just plug it into the wall and away it goes. Because it isn't going to need it every day, just when it doesn't rain. Okay, that's it for tomatoes. One, two, three, four, five plants, which is as many as we had that first time we had an abundance of tomatoes. So I think that'll work. Uh, last year, I put a lot of our tomatoes into the, uh, the big pots, but right now I haven't got anything planned for them. If uh, something comes up, we'll go ahead and uh, use them for something. of uh, vegetables. These are Spanish mammoth peppers. They were green peppers, green bell peppers. They're just a particular variety. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this area right here with as many of these will, as will fit within a reasonable amount of uh, spacing. And uh, I did not pre-dig the holes on this time. Because it just like, it's just not too hard to dig them anyway. Oh, wait a sec. I do need my bone meal. So I'm going to put that in the pepper. Okay, here we go.
Okay. Uh, make sure I've got a my stick labeling it right in front. And I think I can get one more in over here next to my uh, next to my little walking stones. Uh, last year I did not put tomatoes in this bed. The point of uh, sw switching up where most of your things are year to year, or at least the uh, perennials, is so you don't have diseases that are the particular vegetable is susceptible to. Uh, for instance, uh, there are several uh, things that will take care or make it so that tomatoes don't grow too well. As I mentioned, end blossom rot, which this is going to help with, but there are others. And by putting it in a bed that has not had any sort of infection from whatever it could be from a previous year, it makes it so that uh, it won't reinfect it. Now I know I've got bloom in this bed over here yet, but I was going to, uh, I've got cabbage that are going to be ready in a couple weeks, so I'm going to just fill in the cabbage over here. Okay, that's it for peppers. One, two, three, four, five. Five peppers, five tomatoes. And I've got quite a number of leftovers for uh, these. I'm sure that uh, there will be some neighbors who will be happy to take them off my hands. I do have other things to plant, but I'm not going to do any more right now because i got to go get dinner ready. And after that, I've got to walk the dog. So, that's it for today. And we will catch you next time I do uh, some, some gardening or some other thing. And let you know, this is some old man signing off. Mm -hmm.